Well, hi, it's uh, Rob Daywalt. I'm going to just take a minute to welcome you to our class. I'm going to put up a uh, private email. You can reach me just about any time if you have a question. Um, basically, just want to talk to you a little bit uh, in, in any kind of legal related class or uh, con law or even some of the criminal law classes. Uh, we talk a lot about briefing. And um, one of the ones that uh, we are in vogue, it's been around for quite a while, is what we call the IRAC or FIRAC method. And, and they are both basically the same thing. The problem that you get into is sometimes when you just use IRAC, you get the impression that there, you leave out the facts, but that is not the case under both systems. Another thing I want to talk about is that you always want to include the, uh, you know, the heading. So it would be like MAP versus Ohio, and then I'm just making this up, but uh, let us say that it's like uh, 511 U.S. 122 and then the year 1961 okay and so in other words you need the names of the parties uh, you need the this is the volume number this is the reporter and this is the page so volume reporter page and then this is the year that it was published now the thing is this started like in 1958, but I mean it went on and on and on and so the year is always the year that it's published, okay? So reporter, volume, page, under every, every time you cite a case. And I see that a lot with people and they uh, do not do a very effective job on this. That's something I want to start right off with in the beginning. So the heading even though it's not mentioned in IRAC or FIRAC, but heading is very important. So then once we get the heading, then you need the facts, the issue, the rule, analysis, and conclusion, okay? Now this is just a summary it's called a brief for a reason. It's supposed to be brief, so it's a summary of what happened in this particular case. Now, for example, in the facts, it's the pertinent facts. It's not every fact. It's not like, uh, well, Dorley Mapp was born in 1949 in uh, North Dakota. That's not a fact for our purposes in a brief, okay? Now, there is a fascinating book about her. She's part Indian. She's part black. It's a very interesting story, but uh, that's not relevant for our purposes in, in briefing this case involving MAP versus Ohio, okay? What we're really talking about is illegal searches, okay? So we have to set this up. So the facts in the case were the um, police came looking for a guy that was uh, supposedly involved in a bombing uh, and uh, I think that it was an attempt on the life of the boxing promoter Don King, if I remember correctly. Uh, so, you know, the important facts are the facts that are related to that. So the police first tried to get in her house. She said, no, not without a warrant. They left for a while. They came back about an hour later, and they forced their way in her house. They searched. They found no bomb-making materials. They found nothing about... Uh, bombs, but they found a little bit of what we would really call soft porn today. Uh, some magazines that a man that had been her boarder or live-in boyfriend had left in her house and so they charged her with uh, possession of pornography, which is totally not even a crime nowadays, but back in that day they, they accused her of the crime of possession of pornography. See, these are facts. So what's the issue? Well, the issue is, you know, search and seizure. Can they force their way in your house without a warrant? Okay, and so what's the rule then? The rule is 
that the Fourth Amendment and the Fourteenth Amendment, taken together, require that states follow the same rules as the federal government and exclude any evidence that is obtained by an illegal search. So it's about the exclusionary rule, it's about search and seizure, Fourteenth Amendment, Fourth Amendment, uh, and so then analysis is, you know, uh, in the uh, lower courts they talk about, well, uh, what was the real damage? There's an ongoing argument between prosecutors and defenders about issues regarding um, having a chilling effect on the ability of people to defend themselves, uh, police state versus, you know, hey, we've got this evidence, it's perfectly valid. The only thing wrong is it was obtained illegally. You know, can't the courts use the evidence because we know it proves the case? Uh, but then the issue, you know, it also goes into a lot of other side issues like what was their motive in the first place? Supposedly looking for a bomber and now they get in there on the inside of the place and they find out all they can find is a little dab of pornography. Uh, so in conclusion, the court ruled uh, that, you know, this evidence has to be excluded when it's obtained illegally. Now there's been a lot of changes, variations on that. Uh, they've walked so far on this road from uh, the rule being that you have to exclude evidence when it's illegally obtained uh, to now, well, if, what about if it was inevitable? What if they would have found it? But for the fact that they engaged in illegal activity, they would have still found it if they followed all the rules, you know. Well, who knows? Who really knows? So it's a shortcut. But anyway, I think you now you can kind of see how briefing works, that you're trying to get a good solid summary, uh, page, page and a half, uh, maybe two pages at most. Uh, and you know, so set it up right, always put in a heading, uh, talk about the important facts, not just the side facts or you know, just don't pad it with a few facts. Issue, rule, analysis, conclusion. So the issue, try to get to the point. There can be multiple issues in some of these cases. Uh, rule is, you know, we're usually looking for some organic rules in the Constitution, maybe a statute, uh, or, uh, you know, you can also just put things like exclusionary rule, search and seizure, you know, things like that. Analysis, so that's where you kind of go back and forth, try to talk about both sides like I did, and then the conclusion, you try to set forth the what the uh, court's final decision was. Now some of you that I've seen in the past, in the conclusion, you add uh, a couple uh, lines in there about what you think. And I think that's terrific. I don't have a problem with it at all. Tell me what you think about this case. You may say, well, I think it sucks. Now we go into some of these really touchy cases like Roe versus Ray, Roe versus Wade. You're going to have uh, it's going to break down right down the middle. Really, you're going to have people say, "Oh, this was terrible," beginning of the end, and then you're going to have other people saying, "Finally, uh, the woman's right to choose has been recognized." Uh, and so here again, there's shades of gray in this when you get into the. Uh, late term abortions, obviously it's a lot different than the early abortions. Uh, CDC issues about 13, 14, 15 year old girls having abortions. I mean that generally speaking is statutory rape. Uh, so these children shouldn't be having children uh, under those circumstances. So basically you can see what I'm saying. I'm not advocating for one side or another. I'm just trying to lay out that when you get into a lot of these, when you're talking analysis, you can get, it can go back and forth. And I really think the more that you do that analysis, the stronger that your brief is. Understand that this is a tool. This is not a platform for you to sell your belief system. It's a tool. And what it is, is to try to give a balanced view of both sides. And then really what you're focusing on here is the conclusion of the court, you know, not your conclusion. Uh, and then if you want to add a sentence or two at the end, uh, at the very end of the conclusion, that's fine. I don't have a problem with it. But don't make the brief overwhelmingly one thing or another. As we go through con law, you'll find, some of you have been my students before, 
you'll find that this can go back and forth and swing and you're going to have people that are just really advocating one side or another. Oh, I think this is terrible. Well, uh, what I'm trying to get across to you is it's really better uh, when it comes to this part that you just try to give that balanced view and then if we have time for discussion, uh, that's what we'll talk about in the discussion. But in the briefing assignments, it's just give me a balanced summary in the brief and then we'll, we can pick it apart and talk about was that smart, was that good in the discussion if you kind of understand what I'm saying. So that's it basically for today. Hope you got some good out of this. I think uh, it, uh, it can be uh, interesting and fun uh, to develop these briefs. Uh, so hey, we'll be coming back with some more uh, good pointers in our uh, video lectures. Thanks.